it is Tammy Tolly from It's Scrapicated. And tonight we are going to be making the jingle stocking. Isn't it so cute? I am Tammy Tolly. What's my name? I am Tammy Tolly from It's Scrapicated, where we do galvanized steel home decor. And twice a week on Wednesday nights, tonight's Wednesday, at 7.30 Central and on Sundays, we um, create one of our shapes. So, I just need to get, hopefully, my little iPad. It's difficult for me to see the comments up there. So, let me hopefully, hopefully, hopefully get my iPad rolling here. And um, I will be able to see comments as we go. Oh, you guys say hi when you join. I would love to know you're there. We're just um, making a little jingle stocking. And I do not, we had this trouble last time. First it worked great and then it doesn't now want to work great where I can actually see the comments down here. So if you, hey Deborah, how are you? We'll see what kind of shenanigans we can get into tonight, right? Hi Carrie. Um, I shook up all the paint bottles before um, we started tonight and I actually got smart and moved my paint to these bottles so I'm not constantly banging the jars on the tables to get them open. Um, so we are making jingle stocking. If you're just coming in, it's a big one. It's, um, this is a door hanger size. We actually have this guy in a 36 inch too, which is amazing on the door, the 36 inch. But my table um, here at my home studio will certainly not hold the 36. So this is a 24. And then we're also going to do the 12. I uh, flipped the camera so everything's backwards for me, of course. Isn't it so cute? And it's so stinking easy. We should be you know, famous last words. We should be done early tonight. <laughs> There's no way that can take an hour. All right, last try here on finding comments. Otherwise, you guys will just have to watch me squint. Because um, I hate to miss your comments. That's the best part of being live is uh, getting to hang out with, with you. So while I'm looking through this, let me tell you something that's happened. We have a post that's gone viral. So if... Um, yeah, I don't you it is absolutely insanity. Do you guys remember? Um, I shared a post and you may have may or may not have seen it simply because we have about I don't know well we had about 13,500 600 followers on our Facebook page and I mean that's a decent amount of followers if you're thinking about analytics for a Facebook page but um, Facebook because of the algorithms um, only will show your post to unless you get you know change it so you get notifications from the page will only show your post to about a, a really good post that people are liking and commenting on maybe like 3,000 people and I'm, tell, I'm giving you this whole background because I'm going to set this up to blow your mind because my mind is seriously blown. So about 3,000 people. And that's if people are commenting, hey, Uncle Rob, if people are commenting, they're liking, they're sharing. And those are things that you can do for any small business that really, really help them. Um, so about 3,000 people. You guys, I shared our handle on TikTok and I shared a uh, snowflakes made out of paper bags, 5.2 million, million people, 5.2 million people that post has reached. So we have picked up about, in the, in the span of about 24 hours, about 2,500 folks. So if you're new here and you're like, who's this crazy lady? Um, Welcome, you probably got here from the snowflake, the paper snowflakes out of lunch sacks. And you guys, <laughs> so that is absolute insanity that, and it's just, and it just continues to grow. This morning it was like 2.3 million, and tonight it is um, like 5.4 million people 
and we've picked up all these new followers and I'm like oh my gosh because we really do galvanized steel not that I can't do other crafts but that's not typically what we do because it's a little confusing um, since we have a brick and mortar and all that good stuff so anyhow thank you miss Mary you're so sweet um, yeah so that's happening so if you're if you found us from the viral share from TikTok, um, welcome. I'm Tammy Tolly. Um, you never know what's gonna happen here. Last time I was live, I threw a bottle across the room on accident. So, all right, so that is the excitement. Yeah, it is wonderful. Um, I just hope that, well, I guess if folks then see me and they're like, yeah, I'm not really interested in that. I want more DIY crafts, you can always unfollow, right? You always find your tribe, as they say. Um, cause I'm not for everyone and then that's totally cool. There is somebody, you know, that may be out there. I saw it come up and it said it's scrapicated is live. Could it be any more delayed? No, probably not. All right. Well, I give up on that for now. All right. Jingle stocking. So I'm going to paint this in two different, um, color schemes. I'm going to, this one and the one that we have been doing, and this stocking matches our Jingle All the Way porch candy. So this is the J of Jingle, um, and then all the way goes up the side, and it's this old red, which is a new color for us in our paint line. Where is it? This is backwards. The old red with the creamy white, hey Uncle Joe, and then the lime green with the tone on tone polka dots. So this little guy, I'm going to make just like this one. And then I have another one off to the side that's the same size. Excuse me. <clears throat> and we're going to make it in the bright red versus the um, kind of vintage or old red. Okay, so I'm sorry, I got to tell you yeah, really quick. Our medium is galvanized steel. And I, when you see me painting here, I am painting on textured steel. And how I got it textured is I simply sprayed this Rust-Oleum texture spray on it and it sprays like sand on it. So it makes it bumpy so the paint can grab because steel is super slick. And you can still paint on bare steel. You just use a, instead of using bristle brushes, which we'll be using tonight, you would use foam brushes. That was a foam brush here. You would use these and then you would paint it on dry it you can force dry with your blow dryer and then paint the next coat and just build the colors the bumps allow us to carry more paint in our bristle brush and you really just do one coat of paint so that's kind of the why to the what so the first thing we're going i tend to want to shake these up it's like a habit and now i'm like scared of bottle shaking if you missed it you'll have to i uh through the bottle across the room last time. I'm still, um, I'm still not over it, as you can tell. <laughs> oh. So these are our new two ounce paint bottles. We have our, our paint line now in the two ounce. So the easiest way to do this, isn't it so cute? I know, Dawn, so you could get one, um, say in a craft kit that's gonna release tomorrow, mm, or, you know, a bare metal one, and you can make your own, and it will be less expensive. So I'm just loading up the paintbrush. The easiest way to do this is to paint the entire base color, I think, first. So, oh, yeah, you guys can see. And I'm just basically, I hate to use the word slop, but that's it. I'm just kind of slopping that paint on there. I like the way we paint to kind of leave some of that texture showing through it makes it look um, a little more vintage a little more rustic might be a good word all right so that and oh no there's a there's a little hair from the bristle brush there all right no one would notice that except you know the person painting it so that's what it looks like and you can see that oh, glare from my ring light sorry about that it does have some of that texture showing through. If you don't like that, yes, this is old red. Is that um, Bubby or Papa? Um, but yes, this is old red. 
Did I say it was the other color? I probably did. But this is the old red. And um, you can see I kind of got that, some of that texture still showing through there. And I really like that old vintage look. So we're gonna trade out here. I'm gonna put the finished one on the ground. And then I've already painted move that over there in front of the fan. This one, um, and you can really see it on here because this is dried where I've left that show through. And um, I've painted this the creamy white. So it's not a stark white. You could do stark white. I just kind of like the warmth of the creamy white. It's not real bright white. It's got a little bit of beige in it, just a titch. Titch is like my favorite word these days. Just a titch. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, and I gotta remember that how big this stocking is. I am just going to draw these little, the top of the stocking. I don't know, what is that, the cuff? Is that what you would call it? The cuff of the stocking? So the metal, I think you, oh, we should hold this one back up. Has these two little points and we're just gonna draw ours on there. Um, kind of following and then we're gonna bring it down and, and just make some zigzags. So they all might be different and that's kind of the fun of it. You could just um, freehand it on here if you were comfortable with that. But I always like to show the, I'm freaking out now because you know I only got one pencil. Here it is, I have one pencil. <laughs> so you can just pencil it on here and I'm just gonna make some V's. And you can make them all, um, what would that be? Consistent depths, or you can go, you know, kind of all a little more whimsical. And now I'm just gonna connect back up here to my corner. All right, so I have that drawn on there. Hopefully you can see that. And now I'm just gonna paint it in. We do have, and I'm gonna use these tonight. Um, I've been talking about on our website where we're gonna add a new section called hmm, craft supplies and accessories. So we, I'm gonna be using the things that we actually have out there. So it's scrapicated.com. And we have the, this set of detail brushes. These are not the greatest brushes in the world. You know, brushes can cost a, a fortune, but the, they're, they're good for your at-home crafting. I am sorry, I cannot remember off the top of my head how much they are, maybe like three bucks, 350. Um, but it just gives you all these different sizes and they're just really good to have in your, in your uh, craft supplies. So I'm just gonna get me some of this lime green. Oh. And I'm just gonna use my detail brush to go along the edge, and then I'm gonna come back with my chip brush to fill that in. If you guys have any questions or whatnot, um, just type them there in the comments. <clears throat> I still am, uh, you see me take my glasses on and off. We talk about that too. I can still see better up close so far. What do you do with that? Here it is. Without my glasses on. And I'm just using this flat brush to go right over my pencil line. It's just a little bit easier than trying to use that big chip brush. All right. Now we're gonna use us a chip brush so we can cover this area really fast. Um, you know, one of the questions I get asked a lot is do I have to paint in the same direction? No, you don't have to. Um, I tend to, and you'll see me kind of come down like this, but then go back across. I tend to paint side to side. Some folks like to paint um, I paint horizontally, some people like to paint vertically, whatever you're comfortable with. And you know those, in those little spots, I'm just kind of tap, tap, tapping. Tap, tap, tap. There's a lot of sound effects here too, aren't there? Okay. 
of the end of my stocking on, um, I don't know, the texture spray can I was showing you a second ago. All right, now again, I'm still going to, there it is, oh, it's not, I, those little hairs, that's why I always paint on these um, puppy pads, because they can absorb and I can just wipe those right off. Because until your brush has been used multiple times, it just continues to shed hair. So again, I left a little bit of that white showing through just for the rusticness of it. I gotta put my glasses back on now. See if um, anybody had a question. International people want to know how to get your live, including WhatsApp. I don't have WhatsApp, um, but they can't. Um, Joe, we upload all of my lives to our YouTube channel. So we're trying to grow our YouTube channel. Um, so I'll drop it in the comments. And if you guys are YouTubers and you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that'd be amazing. We can't get the youtube.com slash it's scrapicated custom um, link over on YouTube until we have 100 subscribers. So if you're a YouTuber and you would like to subscribe to our channel, we would love to have you. So I basically take these and I download them to my phone and then we upload them to YouTube and then they're there. The links to the YouTube, um, which is this exact same video, will be a part of the craft kits as well. So if someone didn't catch the live, they'll always be able to go back and um, pick them up from YouTube. I know on YouTube it might be a little funky because you know there's all these extra things that happen um, during lives, but you know, people can scrub through. So I think that's the right word, scrub through, when you fast forward. You don't know how to do that. You don't know how to what? Get to my YouTube channel or up, download, upload. Look at me, I sound all fancy. <laughs> all right, let's draw us some stripes while we're waiting here. I don't know, one seems a little, little small. This example I'm using is Miss Joey's example. Um, and, oh, you know what I need to do first? I need to draw the heel on first so I know where I'm going. What I do with the dog on pencil, here it is. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna draw the heel on. You guys can see the heel. Subscribe. Um, when you go to our YouTube channel, um, and I'll drop the link in, to our YouTube channel. When you go to our YouTube channel, there's a big button on there that says subscribe, and you just click it. That's all. I think, I don't know, I don't know about this. If you have to have a Gmail, I don't know how that works. I don't think so, though. Or you might have to create a YouTube account. Don't quote me on that because you know I'm not the technical genius. All right, so I'm gonna draw our heel on here and I'm just kind of guesstimating it, all right? I'm gonna hold it up so you can actually see. Oh, well, it would help if I put the thing straight so we would have a straight line. I've been struggling a little bit with that. We had to make a five foot Christmas tree this week um, that someone ordered. It came out amazing, by the way, but uh oh, I'm gonna have to get somebody to bring me. What happened? Am I dark all of a sudden? Hmm. I don't know what happened there. Do I seem dark? Hmm. It said low power and then it went dark. Huh. No, I don't seem dark. Okay, well, I'm dark to me, but I wonder if my phone is just like, lady, you got low battery. You need to have somebody bring you a charger. If I ask Bob. All right. So I kind of made two lines because when I got it on there initially, it didn't feel like it was big enough. And so it just made it a little bigger. And all I did was just draw that square. Oh, it's crooked. Well, how come drawing a straight line is so difficult? You know, we talk about this all the time. I really struggle with the lines, with the cutting. 
I don't know what the deal is with that. Okay, that's much better. I straightened out my line. Okay. Eric? Hmm. I'm gonna need a phone charger. I had like 50%, so I don't know. Why? It, um, I'm all of a sudden in need of a charge. I guess my phone is just getting old. Okie dokie, so I'm just going to paint in this heel of this stocking. I'm gonna grab my detail brush back again, only so I can get up against that line. Yeah, can you go get my phone charger? The one that's upstairs? You're the best boy ever. You're the best boy ever. Mom's sweet boy. We're the boy moms. You know, they're as sweet as they can be most of the time. All right, so I just used my detail brush to go up against that line that I drew. Um, plug it in. Unplug the fan, it's done enough. <clears throat> yes, what are you, what are you saying yes to Miss Joey, that your boy mom are their sweet as they can be? Or I struggle with straight lines. <laughs> He's even gonna plug it in for me. Maybe we can get him to say hi. What do you think? He said probably not. Did you hear him? Probably not. Okay, we got it back. But I don't know why I'm so dark. Why I can't see my screen? Is it? We don't know if it's charging or not. All right. Well. Hmm. <sighs> Every single time is something. Okay, so we now have our little patch for our heel on there. And now I'm going to draw on the lines for the stripes for the stocking. I feel like I should probably. All right, I'm feeling pretty confident about it. Make it straight. This is kind of like a wonky shape. Uh, so I am struggling a little bit with the lines, getting them straight. And I'm using, as you can see, like one and a half rulers. So I have these two rulers and I have them on top of each other. And then I'm just gonna use that. Now when you get to your heel, I like watching this example here. because you have to make it go at a diagonal. And it would be good to have a picture of it because it does get a titch wonky. If you see me looking, I'm actually looking at our example. All right, and then it wants to be a little wider and then to here. Then we're just going to follow them around. This paint is wet, so I'm trying to be uber careful. So this will be red, this will be white. All right, and then this one is, because it's like at the toe, it's gonna be um, at a bit of a diagonal itself. All right, so let's just go here. And then this is gonna widen out. To here. Good, 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 good. Like I said, You'll have your video too, because it does kind of, in order to get it, um, you know, to look like 
the stocking is, um, it, you know, coming around, you kind of have to make your lines, and this will make more sense when I hold it up, a little more wonky, so to speak. There we go. Me with the lines. Okay. So I have them all drawn on there. Oh, good. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. So we'll do live here, and I don't know if we'll ever get to the... So red, white, red. White, red, yes we'll ever get to a point where we're creating um, original content for YouTube, but it's nice to have the YouTube channel so we can give out links to um, the tutorials for our craft kits. All right. I'm still feeling a little funky about this one, right? This line right here. Joey's on here, at least she was. She'll tell you, we struggle with this when we're, um, well, she makes these all the time and it's still kind of a struggle. We're like, hmm, where's that line go? We have to look too. There, that feels better. So red, white, I'm gonna split the difference here too. Once you draw your lines on there, you'll be able to look at it and go, mm, I, need, I need to move that line just a titch. Okay, so I want this guy to be red. So red, white, red, white, red. Perfect. It worked out perfect, shockingly enough. All right, so now I'm just going to paint the stripes on. I'm going to use my detail, or excuse me, my chip brush, and I'm just going to follow the line. Because if it gets a little below the line and whatnot, that's okay. Because, you know, we want our stocking to look a little rustic anyway. Now, when I get down here to the heel, I'm going to grab that detail brush back again. Um, just so I can get around the heel of this. Without getting in the green. Look at this guy. It's white red. I'm also working around wet paint, and you know what will happen if I get in the wet paint, then we'll have green paint where we're not supposed to have green paint. Taking all my concentration to go all around this line. There we go. That's why detail brushes are so good to have, because then you can just work in your space you know if you got a tight spot and you don't have to worry so much now again I'm just kind of tap tap tapping to fill that in all right this guy's red we're on a roll I didn't erase my other line. Doggone you, Tammy. Doggone you, white. There we go. Had two lines. I was like, rut row, rash row. I might have to use our blow dryer really quick to, because I think, well, we still got to put polka dots on. Figuring out uh, the lines as they, you know, so if for it to come around, I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. It's probably the it takes the longest. All right, looking good. Isn't it so cute? I. What do you guys think? You like the bright red 
or I know we're not done with this one. We'll have to hold them up side by side. All right, so hmm, we are gonna have to use the blow dryer and I'm sorry for that because one, I know it's a little bit loud and um, it's really bugging me that that's so dark. Looking good, I know, I think it looks great. So be sure I didn't miss anybody's comments. Let me grab this blow dryer. And I'll just get up here and then hopefully the heel will dry so we can put the polka dots on. I didn't want to be too long. I just wanted to speed that along. Now I'm going to put the polka dots. These that I'm using tonight are, um, you like the bright red better? The bright red's really cute. These polka dot makers that I'm using tonight, I just opened this. These are um, part of our new um, craft supplies. So you can get these. I I cannot remember. I am so so sorry, um, what they price for, but they're really inexpensive, and they come packaged like that. Now you may notice that it doesn't feel like a round, a totally round circle. Um, it. I'm going to show you how you you know after you spin it when you spin it, but all you have to do is soak that in a little water and reshape it. They just get smashed in the shipping process. All right. So now. I'm going to do tone on tone polka dots. So I'm going to lighten this up just a bit. 801. I got 30 minutes. We are going to be early, I think. So I'm going to put a little more green in there. And then I'm just going to use some white or creamy white, whichever um, you would prefer, whether you want them. And you can mix it however you like it. If you want it to be really subtle, or if you want it to be um, more a more of a color difference, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This little stick I'm stirring with <laughs> is uh, a, a handle from a foam brush, but they really are good for um, mixing paint. All right, so we're gonna use this bigger polka dotter. And when we do polka dots, we want to dip it all the way in, but offload the paint across the bottom and all the way around the sides. Otherwise, it's going to pull paint around your polka dot. Um, so we're just going to press, wiggle, 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 and then swirl. Boop. Easy peasy, perfect polka dots. Now, once you've dipped it in a couple times, you won't have to reload it. You'll be able to um, make multiple polka dots, as you can kind of see me doing here. I go in a diagonal pattern. That's just kind of the way I do it. So you see me, there's no right or wrong with polka dots. However you do it. And then sometimes once you get them on there you're like oh I need one more right here all right what do you think I think they look pretty good got lots of little polka dots now this is dry enough I think and I'm gonna put the same polka dots I'm gonna space them out a little bit further on his heel and then you want to do that half polka dot let me move this back a little bit you just kind of you know, just go off the side. I love a half polka dot. That's got lots of polka dots. All right, let me put this over here. All right, so we got all our polka dots on. How easy was that? Super easy, super easy. All right, put the lid back on this so it doesn't fall over. Okay, gang, I am going to have to use the blow dryer really quick again so we can get this dry so I can just show you the detail. 
So this looks, I think this looks great. It looks, it's working really good. Um, I'm not going to compare the two, the old red with the bright red, until I get it all done. But I want to show you what a difference detailing makes. So give me just this hot second here. And um, let me get this dry. Using your blow dryer only on cool. All right, it's not, I can still have some wet spots. You can probably see them where the paint's a little bit shiny, but I think, I might push my luck, but I think it is dry enough for us to do the detail. Now, you can do this with paint and a detail brush. Um, I suggest, it, it's easier to do and a lot faster to do with paint pens. We're going to put black and white highlights all around the edge on the polka dots and then on the stripes as well, kind of in the um, between the colors. So you could do this, like I said, with a little detail brush. You just dip it in your paint, kind of white. You don't want it to be like super wet. Um, and then you're just going to use it and go around the edge. It's a lot easier to do it with your paint pen. And all you're doing is just making lines, basically. It's so easy to do. Oh wait, before I get it all done, here's what it looks like without. The stocking, I know we talked about that, the stocking's so big, I need a bigger table. So all I'm doing is just kind of making random lines, okay? around the edge I'm doing it around the edge of my color as well if you get your paint pen in wet paint which I just did it wants to stop just making lines that's all we're doing and it's going to make a world of you can probably see it now starting to get some depth and some life, so to speak. And you don't want it to be a solid line. You just wanna, you know, kinda lift, lift up every once in a while. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to make the edging. We're calling this part of the detail. We'll just assume I didn't forget. I gotta take my glasses off. I'm sorry, gang. I can just see better, a lot better up close without them. And I'm making this a solid line. And I want it to be just a little bit thicker than the width of this. You may not want yours to be a little bit thicker. You might be like, I'm good with that skinny line. All right, and then I'm just going to make little lines again we're just making lines we want it to look like this little patch is sewn on there all right how fun is that can you guys see you can yeah all right so back to just pretend like i didn't even forget that part so that's it for the cream
Oh no, it isn't, because we're going to highlight our polka dots. And the way I'm going to do that is just randomly around the polka dot, not on the same side every time. Just wherever the mood strikes you. All right. So that's what it looks like with just its white highlights. Getting better. Getting a little more depth and dimension. Now this is where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. We're going to do the same thing with the black. We're just going around the edge. Move glasses. Same exact thing. Lifting up every once in a while. Now, you don't necessarily have to make your black lines in the same place that you made your white lines. Again, this is super easy to do if you don't have paint pens. I know I sound like a, a broken record. Black and white paint pens are also in our craft supplies in our new section on our website. <laughs> oh, I missed this part. Voila. Now I'm just going to do the same thing. A little lighter hand on my polka dots than I used with my weight. Meaning, you know, we just don't want to press quite as hard. I can only make lines like in one direction. Do you guys find yourself in that spot too? Okay. What do you think? I think the detail brings it to life. Um, detailing the edges and adding the little swishies and whatnot. Oh, I thought I couldn't see it in the in the light. All right, so now we're gonna make a bow for this guy, and then we're gonna hold them up side by side, and you can tell me if you like bright red better or vintage red better in um, this fun whimsical shape. Okay, let's find some ribbon. You know it, I have more ribbon than should be allowed by law. How about glitter? You know it's my favorite. No, it isn't. But I think this is fabulous ribbon with the red and the lime. And then it also brings in the green green. I'm going to try to use six different ribbons. Let's see what we got here. Oh, more glitter ribbon. You know, Christmas and glitter, they kind of go together. I'm not a glitter girl, but I do make an exception at Christmas time. I bought some more fun polka dots. And I am going to, you're going to probably think I'm crazy, throw some black and white buffalo plaid in here as well. I kind of tone uh, black and white. I most always, always add to my ribbons. That one's a little short, but I think it'll work. One, two, three, four. One, the black and white in your ribbon will make your colored ribbons pop, okay? So you, I always put black and white in my ribbons. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here? I think we have enough polka dots. Let's see. I think I'm going to use another one of these stripes. So the black and white, one, two, three, four, will make your ribbon pop. And then let's just use this sheer red for the top. Oh, look, there's already one cut. Um, I'm going to take another one. And I'm going to leave that out because that's what I'm going to tie in the middle. All right, let's get the ribbon under control. All right, so I'm going to kind of put my black and white in the center of my ribbon. I'm going to start with this one and then this one. I'm just crisscrossing them. I have six ribbons, so I'm going to put my black and white in the center. And then I'm going to put this one. It's a little bit sheer than this one. So I can kind of see them all. 
and you just have them in this bit of a crisscrossed pattern, okay? So they're just all crisscrossed so I can see them all. Then I'm gonna take my pipe cleaner, cut in half. I'm gonna push down in the center and squeeze it all together in the middle. Squeeze it all together. Then wrap your pipe cleaner around, twist it on the back. Now I'm gonna use this sheer ribbon that we just um, used and I'm, all I'm gonna do is tie a knot in the center. I want it to be just a little bit longer so I'm not struggling to tie it. I hope I didn't miss any comments. Um, the phone is dark and it's a little far away from me. Okay, so all I did, I'm talking and not showing. All I did was just folded it under. That's it. And then I brought this to the top and then we're gonna do it one more time, just like a knot so that it stays secure. I am gonna cut these just a titch. And then I'm gonna fan it out so you can see how cute it came out. And it's so easy. You can get, um, use some, you know, three or four or five different ribbons and make these bows and add them to your Christmas tree. Fill in, it'd be so cute. I do not have my Christmas tree up yet. Some of y'all probably do. So all I'm doing is fluffing, to fluff this out is I'm just pulling on the ribbons. They're secured with that pipe cleaner, so they're not going anywhere. I'm just pulling them out. Voila, how cute, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, I'm, well, let's put the wire on. <clears throat> I just had that doggone wire. Oh, here it is. This is um, bailing wire. Um, I normally we use electric fence wire. Um, because electric fence wire is galvanized and it won't rust. This is just bailing wire and it will. But for purposes of what we're doing, I like the wire when it rusts, but a lot of people don't like that. All right, I gotta scooch back. So all I'm gonna do is put my little wire. I've drilled holes in this. And if you order this as a craft kit or bare metal, I will ask you, do you want us to drill holes or no? And then I wrap it around the back. And then I'm just gonna twist, swirl these into like a, just swirl them around. And I point the end, the end of that wire down. So obviously, so it won't poke poke ya. Tuck it in. All right. Oh, I put the stocking on top of the bow. All right. And then we're going to put our bow on. This is the ooh and ah moment. Like, cause the bows make the things. This wire is a little bit short, <clears throat> but it's in the corner. So it will hang like that. What do you think? It's so cute. I love the bright red. I think it's super cute. All right, so that's bright red. I'm going to have a trouble. I'm going to have trouble getting them both in the picture. And that's vintage red. What's your favorite? What do you think? The bright red? The vintage red? Two very different looks. Changing one paint color. That's it. How fun is that? I think they're super cute. So both of these, um, not to give a, a plug to the shop, but both of these will be on sale in the shop come Friday when we reopen. <laughs> you like the bright barb? Good. Larry, Mary, both, both, you're not going to pick your, are, um, is it Larry or Mary that I'm, that I'm chatting with? Hard to choose. I think they're both really cute, but they're both very different looks. So one is obviously brighter and more whimsical, and the other one is a little more vintage and, um, I don't know, just a little more vintage but is the only word I can come up with. All right, so that's Jingle Stocking. Super easy. Well, hey, Larry, welcome. We don't get a lot of guys around here, so welcome. Welcome, welcome.
All right, kids, that's it. That's all I got on this Thanksgiving Eve. Um, you guys have a wonderful day tomorrow. I know Thanksgiving is going to look a little different this year, um, but may there be joy around your table, and may you take account of all of your blessings. I know um, I am so very thankful for each and every one of you, and thank you for joining me. I will be back on Sunday. We really are going to make snowflakes on Sunday, so I will be back here. And other than that, have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving, and I will see you guys so very soon. Mwah! Bye.